the Alaska Marine Highway System. A ferry boat system that allows you to put your vehicle on the boat and let someone else do the driving. We boarded the ship in Whittier. And then we rode for four days and five nights and got off at Bellingham, Washington. So you stage your vehicles outside, wait till the official man points to you and says you can enter the boat, drive your vehicle down. For most of the cars, they, there were three lanes on each side of the boat and they positioned you so you were pointed facing out so you could get off. And then they called them the wedges, kind of the uh, triangular shapes at the end. And that's where the motorcycles went. The motorcycles needed to be strapped down. So we strapped all four corners of the bike down tight so that any swaying would not have the bike tip over. So once the bikes were nicely secured and we took all of our luggage off the bikes, up to the rooms we went to enjoy the rest of the cruise. Our ship was the Kennecott. Our rooms were on the cabin deck after we stowed our stuff. We were up one more deck to the boat deck to say goodbye to Whittier, to go out and pose out on the observation deck to get some pictures and to say goodbye to some glaciers as we left, as we motored out. This is the view of kind of the um, receiving area and where all the rooms are off of. Going into our room, we put two people in each room. Technically, you could have put four people in each room. There was spots for four people, but we thought that was cozy enough going with two each. From our cabins, it was one level up. And after we went up one flight of stairs, we were up to the main area that had the cafeteria. There's actually a small movie theater, observation lounge, fore and aft, and a small bar area. Here as we walk down to where breakfast, lunch, and dinner were served, if one chose to do that, kind of cafeteria style, pretty bare bones. This was not your all-encompassing cruise where everything was included. You had to buy your food, but the prices were actually pretty good. There was a small bar area on the side where uh, the first night we played cards. And then for those who didn't get rooms, you could go up to the top deck and set up tents in this kind of solarium area up on that deck. There, there were a few people who did that, not many on the cruise that we were on. And then there was another place they called the Eagle's Nest that you could look at either side of the boat. It was very warm up there. And in inside the enclosed space. And this is the forward viewing section that you could be in inside, away from the elements, and uh, watch out the windows. And then the doors were in the back. You could go out and be out on the, the bow if you wanted to pretty quickly. And just a quick walk outside and to enjoy uh, the wind in your hair and the sounds of nature outside. Spent a lot of time out on this area because it was uh, quite a nice space to be out on and a good place to meet people and talk. Everyone found their favorite place on the boat. Bruce's favorite place was up on the top deck, usually in the sun, waking up occasionally to see an animal or someone he knew pass by. This was kind of a no frills kind of cruise. Um, if the cafeteria was it open, here were your choices. And yes, indeed, right here, like the fancy cruises, this is the midnight buffet. Just insert dollars and make your selection. We requested a tour of the bridge and they were very nice to give us that tour. So we went up, each took a turn at the wheel. Of course, we could spin the thing. It really wasn't driving the ship. They had disabled it for us to stand there, but we felt powerful anyway. We all took a turn steering the ship, stood there. The captain was very, very nice, talked to us for a very long time, and it was a good visit on the deck. The Alaska Marine Highway started in 1949 as a way to connect the cities in Alaska that didn't have roads that connected them. Our cruise went from 
the first stop at Yuccatac on to Juneau. But in Juneau, we docked 12 miles away from where all the main cruise ships docked, but we grabbed a taxi and went into the town. And Ketchikan, which was our favorite, we were only two miles away from where the main ships, so that just was a short walk. And we went in and had lunch and returned to the ship. If you're wondering about the wildlife, we did see many dolphins. We actually saw a pod of orcas and some individual humpback whales, along with eagles and, and sea otters and many other animals. The ship had a weekly fire drill that we all got to witness as we cruised into a port where it was nice calm water. And then the captain surprised everybody by doing a man overboard drill. He heaved out a ring buoy and called out man overboard. The entire crew had to run up, run around the ship looking for the buoy. They had to point to it. The ship was actually doing circles in the, in the little inlet until they found it. Then they ran the fast rescue boat, dropped it off the side, ran it out, picked up the buoy, came back, and had to lift the speedboat back up. So it was kind of exciting to watch that. Everybody on the ship got involved and it was kind of a nice entertainment event for us on the cruise. One morning we were told that there was a ship out in front of us, a small fishing vessel. They saw it on radar but wasn't communicating, wasn't sending out a beacon, So they had, and it was a very foggy morning, so they had to blast the foghorn to keep warning the small ship that we were there. When we were in Ketchikan, there was a small island across the water that was an airport. This is the infamous um, story of the bridge to nowhere because they keep lobbying to put a bridge to the island, but it would be a bridge to nowhere. You actually get there by ferry. Um, but it's a regular airport, but it's also a seaplane and float plane airport. So as we sat there, we watched plane after plane land in the water right next to our boat. is clearly the weather. The weather, after we stowed the bike, got them under cover, the weather was perfect. Other highs? The food on chip was pretty darn good. Yeah. Oh, well, the highs. But just uh, the beautiful scenery and nice weather. For me, the, the night sky last night was the most incredible night sky I've ever seen. It was incredible. You pointed that sky out to me. I would have missed it. I woke you. Did yeah. you have to go I, see I, I, I got out of the rack and uh, went out and looked. It was amazing. We saw comets. We saw satellites tracking across the sky. More stars than I've ever seen in my life. Very smooth water. Uh, it's why the weather's for, been so nice. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the cards playing cards was was awesome it's a lot of fun you you learn that who your friends high. are <laughs> and aren't are that not was, that was a high Did... catch a can was good a little over a two mile hike into town and then uh, it's a great town yeah catch can is and some good good shopping here we're back on highs the the bargains for jackets and t-shirts. I think Bob doubled his uh, wardrobe. <laughs> I can get home now. <laughs> you have a lot of Ketchikan gear. <laughs> and just technically, for those wanting the, the jewelry prices were not realistic, so we didn't buy any. No. <laughs> Nor gold. But I, Nor I, gold. I think if we were going to is... buy gold, we would have bought it from Lisa, right from the source yeah. at Central. <laughs> she would have given us a good deal. Nuggets, right? That was great, great cruise experience. 
And yes, it was. A great way to break up the trip. Let somebody else drive for 2,000 miles. But I think we're all ready to hit the road tomorrow morning and uh, cover Can some new territory, some new states. We had indeed enjoyed our four days of relaxation on the boat. But now it was time to continue the journey home.